So most meditations, what happens in a meditation is that it helps each person to kind of reach a state of calm, peace, and from there we go into more transcendent states of existence. The calmer and more relaxed a body is, and a mind is, and a spirit is, the more easily the life force can begin to flow through your body. As it flows through your body, you get a joining of what we would call heavenly or celestial energy, which is just the energy that permeates. We're in a great sea of it all the time. And then the magnetic field that comes up from the earth. When the two join inside a human being, it's almost like creating a universe. In truth, these energies blend on us all the time because if they didn't, we wouldn't survive. And so what we're looking for is the ability to sort of move that energy through verbal cues. Now, uh, traditionally this was referred to as Dai Gong, which is a little bit strange. The word Dai is uh, loosely translated means belt. And what it means is the ability to carry we used to carry things on a belt. And gong means that which has been cultivated. And so we're saying we're going to carry something that's been cultivated. In this case, I'm going to use my voice as a cue. My voice, each time I take a breath in, blend it with the internal energy that's inside my body with an intention to, to act almost like a remote control. The remote control would be as you hear the sound the signal should pass to your body and it should move the chi much the same as if we were inserting acupuncture needles or we were massaging a point. The sound and the chi can act as a catalyst to move the energy. For our purposes, what we want to do is we want to use this really short film as, as a means of a short treatment. There's no other way to really explain that. We'll just say a, a way to make the chi in your body move and rebalance. In most conditions, if a person has any condition at all, there are two ways that we can direct the energy that most of the time will initiate a healing process. The first function in the body would be through metabolism. So we either need to metabolize something that's not good for us and move it out through the body. Um, we also, it's also useful to build new healthy cells to repair things that have been injured and to create an environment in the body that's healthy and balanced. And the second function that we usually want to try to hit is the immune function. And by immunity, I don't mean resistance. I don't mean the, the ability of, of somebody to push something away, but instead, whatever comes into the body, the body's life force will harmonize with it, elevate it, and so that if there's a virus or an illness, it will bring it to a state where your body will expel whatever is bad and hold on to whatever is good. The theory behind this is that even a, an illness or a virus has some tiny component in it which can make us stronger. So from here we'll begin. First part, you can hold your position however you want to be. You can sit down, you can lie down, the posture is not rigid or static. You just want to be at, at ease as you're most relaxed. And then from there, we'll let your shoulders drop. Have the tip of your tongue lightly touch the space between your upper teeth and gum. If you're sitting up, we'll have your head slightly bent to open up C1 and C2 so that the pathways can be open to the rest of your spine. Hand position, some people like to keep the palms up. If you're lying down, they can be this way can be folded across your chest. They can be resting on your abdomen. Um, some people like to do various mudras or, or hand positions to direct the energy. Whatever is most comfortable for you. And first we'll just have you relax your body. And as you relax your body, just become aware of that part of you that is aware, a part of you that's always watching you. And from there, notice every time you take a breath in, and 
on the exhale, where does it go? How does that breath move? And then from there, let's imagine that the very top of your head begins to open and receive whatever divine light or energy, however you imagine the divine to be. Allow that divinity to flow in through the top of your head into the very center of your head. From there we'll find the pituitary gland, we'll find the hypothalamus, and this will begin the process or activate the process of healthy metabolism. We'll let that move down and back to your, the back of your neck and slowly start to move down. At each nerve root, the first cervical, the second, and once it reaches the third cervical vertebrae, the chi begins to flow a little bit forward along your neck down to just above your collarbone, above the clavicle. It stops there for a minute and it begins to energize the phrenic nerve, it moves to your lungs and your diaphragm. And that allows the chi to descend in your body As it passes below your collarbone and flows down into your abdomen, your digestive organs, the chi fills your lungs, flows down through your legs, out the soles of your feet. And this begins a process of healthy metabolism, ridding your body of those things that don't serve and creating and building those things that do. And from there we'll go bring our attention to the large bone, which is C7, where your neck meets your shoulders. And then just underneath that is the first thoracic vertebrae, thoracic outlet. And let that energize for a minute. Just bring your light attention there. This helps energize all the bone marrow in your body, building healthy blood cells. Let the chi sink down one more vertebrae to the second thoracic outlet. This begins to energize the thymus gland, which is just above your heart, behind your sternum. And the thymus gland produces healthy immune cells. So as we energize this nerve root and this gland, the body begins to build healthy and mature immune cells, as well as the energetic function of, the, or of your immunity, which allows you to embrace and elevate anything that you come in contact with. Any substance, virus, bacteria, chemical, even a situation that isn't to our liking, this energy can come in and circle it 
and elevate it so that it becomes beneficial. And then we'll drop down one vertebrae to the third thoracic outlet. This begins to feed energy to the lungs. And the lungs begin to build the weight chi or the energy that's around your body, the first line of protection. First initiation of an immune response whenever we need it. And then we'll sink down to the next thoracic outlet in the spine. To the fourth thoracic outlet and in that space it helps to open up the sweat glands in your body the ability to release anything that is potentially toxic or harmful to radiate any buildup of heat which can also include stress tension anxiety fear all these things slowly begin to leave your body through this space. And then we'll count down three more spaces to the th seventh thoracic outlet, which brings energy to the spleen which is the ruling organ of the lymphatic system, which also helps to cleanse the body of impurities and carry them away. And it also adds to abdominal circulation, energizes the lower intestine, the ability to let go of anything that is potentially harmful. And then from here, we'll sink the energy to just below the navel, about an inch and a half below the navel, to about two thirds of the way in towards the spine. We'll take a breath in and exhale and imagine the exhale flowing through the soles of your feet. And you can remain in this position in a meditative position for as long as you like. Strengthen your life force, charge your battery, calm your mind. And that's it.